already 36 years and she wanted to get married but there is nothing is taking place and nobody is coming to marry her but when we are, we are keep on praying and praying what we feel she's already married then why she has to marry again so we asked her are you married she said no i am not married so we said are you ever married at least once she said no she's never married and she wanted to get married but we are not getting an inspiration that she is not single. It is as if she is already married. Then as we were praying, we came to know that she had different more than three, four boyfriends. And with all of them that she lived together, she had physical relationship. And now before God, she is already married because we have just read, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 15. They are no longer two. My dear sisters and brothers, when somebody has a relationship with somebody, they have shared their life in totality. They are no more single. 1 Corinthians 6 from 15, they are no longer single. They are seen before God. They are one. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make the members of a prostitute? Never. Then verse 16 we read, what is exactly happening? Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? It is said, the two shall be one flesh. I do have a testimony. This is in happened in Nairobi. This is whenever we pray, one girl, particular person, she used to shout and scream and manifest that she feels something is moving in her body. So she goes for prayers, deliverance prayers, but nothing happens. So this evil attack is there. But surprising thing is that she has no problem. If you look externally, she has no problem. It happens only when prayer service is going on, she starts manifesting as if somebody or something is inside her. So she was brought for special prayer. So when we started to pray, what the Lord gave us is Sirach chapter 12 verse 14. Sirach 12 14 we read that no one pities a person who associates with a sinner. No one pities with a person who knowingly associates with a sinner. Then we asked her that whether she is married. Then she said she is not married but she had a boyfriend. So she, we asked her how long she was with the boyfriend. And she was with the boyfriend more than six months. They stayed together and now they are separated. And we asked her, how long that you have this manifestation when, when she goes for prayers, she feels something is moving in her body. She said, now it's more than six months. That means since that she got separated, that this problem is there. Then we asked, then now where is the boyfriend? Now she is telling that she does not know about him. She has no contact. She has no friendship at all. She broke up because his boyfriend, she's telling, he was an unbeliever, he was an atheist. He was not even permitting her to pray. He was not even permitting her to go to church, go to prayer, because he was against God. And so it was a, a very broken relationship. She broke up, but now what happens? Something is moving in her body. Now, we told her to pray Psalm 31 4. Psalm 31 4. Psalm 31 for we read, take me out of the net that is laid for me, for you are my refuge. Let's kindly raise your hands and repeat this word of God. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. For you are my refuge. So we asked you to pray this word of God daily 10 times for one month for deliverance. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. And we asked her to pray for the boyfriend and bring the boyfriend so that we pray over him. So when we started to pray, uh, she was asked to pray this. We prayed for her and we told her to repeat it daily. After three weeks, she came back after these prayers and she got the details of her boyfriend. She had no contact. She had no phone number because she had such a terrible experience with this boy because he even tried to choke her neck and tried to kill her. That's why she broke up. So now when we started to pray, she got all the conduct and she started to pray and she came with a, another shocking news that her so-called boyfriend was a devil worshipper. 
sisters and brothers. So when she had a relationship, a physical relationship with her boyfriend, she was also affected by this. That's why the scripture says, Revelation chapter 18 verse 4, once again we read, come out of that sin. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her. That means come out of every kind of sexual sin, my people, so that you do not take part in her sin. And so that you do not share in her plague. That means when you have a physical relationship with someone, you are sharing in their pain, you are sharing in their sickness, you are sharing in their plague. It is such a serious thing because they are no longer two, but they are one. That's why for this girl, for God, she's married because there's something called a soul tie that she's already tied. Her life is given to the other. Giving sexuality means giving life. That's why it becomes a bondage for so many that after a relationship with someone, they feel after a relationship, their life is finished. They are defiled. They are not good. They are not worthy to live. This is an area of inner wound. Again, we read about this, how serious it is because our body is God's temple. 1 Corinthians 3.16 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 we read, Don't you know that you are, you are, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Do you not know that you are God's temple? And that God's Spirit dwells in you? That you are God's temple? So this particular girl, why she was manifesting? Because what this devil worshiper, this particular boy, what she had, he had as a gift was this disturbance. So that was being transmitted to her. We asked her to forgive that boyfriend and pray for the boyfriend because she was unable to forget what has happened. She was unable to forgive this boyfriend who abused her and dumped her. But we told her, how can you get out of it? We told Matthew 5.44, what you have to do? Pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. Pray for this boyfriend. Now you have a duty to pray for the deliverance of this boyfriend. And until he is delivered, you will have this heaviness, this anger, this unforgiveness. You have to deliver him. You have to release him in Jesus' name and you will be set free. And then she said, but if it is again coming, what I have to do? We told her, there is somebody who has told you that he will give you a new life. John 6.56, John 6.46, on verse we read, John 6.46, John 6.46, not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God, he has, he has seen the Father. Sisters and brothers, Jesus is telling us, is going to give us Abba Father, Abba Father's love. And this love is being transmitted to us through the power of the Holy Eucharist. Again, 6.51 we read, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread and live, will live forever and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Again, verse 56. 6.56, Jesus said, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood Abide in me and I in them. We told her, when you come and offer the Holy Mass, when you surrender your sins, the Lord is going to give you his body, his blood. And then your body becomes the body of Jesus. It becomes a new person. You become a new person. You are not that old person who has been defiled. We have a forgiving God. We told her to confess your sin. When you confess your sins, God forgives you. And after the confession, even if you remember what has happened in your life, God has forgotten. And if you ask the Lord after the confession you have made, the Lord will tell you, Isaiah 43, 25, He will tell you, looking at your face, my daughter, I do not remember what happened in your life. I, I am He who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. We told her, to get out of these torments, she has to confess her sin. Once confessed, forgiven forever. And she has to receive the Eucharist 
when she receives the Eucharist, her body is no more her old body that committed a sexual sin. That becomes a new body. That's the body of Christ. That is a power of the Eucharist. He makes you a new person, a new creation. You have to believe John 1, 12. Jesus said, the scripture says, those who believed in him, those who received him, the Lord gave them the power to become the children of God. Today, if you are wounded, you are hurt because of the past painful sins. And now you are not confident even to get married. You feel that once you have committed this sin, now you think that you are still defiled. You have that guilty feeling. You are thinking that you can never get out of it. The Lord is telling, he is a forgiving God. Once you confess that sin, he has forgiven. And the Lord is telling, I will never remember what you have committed. And not only that, he is offering his own body, his own blood. And he is telling you, those who receive me. Again, we read, let's claim this word of God. John 6, 56. Let's claim it and believe it. That those who eat my flesh, please repeat after me. Those who eat my flesh, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood, and drink my blood abide in me, abide in and me, I in them. And I in them.